I just can't. I can't even. <laughs> I don't know how to start this thing, man. Boy, howdy. I saw, I saw Avengers Endgame. Dude, that movie. Look, I've never really had a movie like a movie like. Fuck me up before. I've never had a movie just fuck me up so hard, and that was before Infinity War. Infinity War fucked up just the world. It just it screwed up the world. Thanos snapped. Oh my goodness, just nothing but craziness. My brain can't even like. I can't. I couldn't possibly just organize my thoughts and put it into a video essay. I just, I just couldn't do it. So let's just call this what this is. Let's just call this a rant. Um, it's basically a podcast. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about one thing. I'm just going to talk about Avengers Endgame. My entire, enti- entire experience with Endgame and leading up to it and all that stuff. This is just going to be one giant just rant. And I have no organizational <laughs> structure to this video whatsoever. Just cause fuck it. Just fuck it, dude. I haven't done, I haven't done like a rant style video really. Um... Screw it. This is just going to be as raw and unedited, probably, at least I hope so, as I can make it. Avengers Endgame. I saw it. Dear God, I can't move on with my life. I saw it last night with my friends uh, and my sister. And there there was three of them and just me, so four of us total. And I I was trying to talk to them, but it was midnight by the time. It was a three-hour movie. Don't get that twisted. It was a three-hour movie. I prepped. I did exactly what the Russo brothers said. I think it was Joe Russo who said it. They said, prep. As if you're going into surgery, I I did that. <laughs> I prepped like I was going into surgery. I was so thirsty by the end of the movie. I didn't even have to shit because I ate so little. Uh, it was it's it was worth it too. It was so worth it because even though I didn't, I hardly drank anything yesterday before I saw the movie. I still kind of kind of felt a little bit of pee. I just had to pee a little bit. I don't know where to begin. I don't I don't I don't know where to begin. I'm just going to start right at the beginning. Before right immediately right after all the the opening the previews and stuff, all the previews, it just like cut. You know, we got the we got the last message in the theater that said, you know, turn off your phones and enjoy the enjoy the ride and you know, there are brand new seats in my theater too, the nice reclining seats. Thank Jesus for that, okay? Thank Thanos. Thank Thanos for that. That these theaters upgraded just so they would be prepared for Avengers Endgame, which is I'm pretty sure 100% true. But right after the previews at the beginning, it's just it's just bam, Hawkeye's on screen. Um, by the way, spoiler warning. I, I, is that too late to say that? <laughs> I'm just gonna put spoiler in the title. Screw it. Hawkeye's on screen, and just immediately as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw him and his daughter, and she's like shooting the bow, I was just like, that's it. They're they're gonna get dusted. I don't know who, probably all of them except for Hawkeye, sure enough. His daughter goes first. Next thing you know, he turns around like all the way across his field and his family's gone. It's like, yeah, okay. So now he's on, you know, that happened. That's set in motion, um, Ronan, you know, and then what even, what even else happened? It was Tony and Nebula. Tony was dying on a ship and they did a really, really good job. It's something that I almost didn't catch at first until I looked down at the tank top that shut the fuck up dumpster i'm trying to do something here i guess it's not your fault they made him look good like dude he was it's three weeks he was going he was going for a while without without food i'm pretty sure um water i don't i have no idea the oxygen i all that stuff is just such a blur they made him look so good at being sickly now captain marvel comes out of nowhere and saves the day is that like a deus ex machina type thing here's what i think happened with captain marvel um (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Fuck, man. Shut up. I can see, like, right down there now. This is my bedroom. I can see right down there. Captain Marvel, I think the the post credit scene for her own movie, the one where she goes to the Avengers and... and uh, or no, was it the post... Yeah, it was the post credit. No, it was the mid credit scene. It was the mid credit scene. The one where she's with the Avengers and she goes down and touches down and sees all the, all the dead Avengers and stuff. Shut the... Mm. I think she talked to the Avengers... And they all said, yeah, we kind of need Iron Man. We kind of need Tony Stark. Otherwise, we're all kind of screwed here. And I think she went up looking in space for him. I don't know how she found him. But, I mean, um, 
Marvel and a bunch of dude. This there's a bunch of cinematic. What do you call them? Like coincidences, conveniences. I don't even know what you would call them that have taken place that have led to some extraordinary things. And this movie, the entire MCU could be thanked for being saved by a fucking rat. <laughs> the rat, <laughs> the, the rat that I, you guys know what the rat I'm talking about. The rat that allowed um, Scott Lang to come out of the quantum realm and save the entire MCU. Yeah, that just something like that, you know. It's not like it's entirely implausible. Rats, I mean, shit. In a in a post apocalyptic world like that, I, that's hardly the the least believable. Or I'm sorry, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I was right. That's hardly the least believable thing that I've seen in that whole movie. In a movie where a dude had six magical rocks, snapped his fingers, and it just fucked up his just entire body. But Thanos used it again. Y'all, this the trailers for this movie did justice for like the third for like the first half an hour of the movie i didn't believe it like i didn't i heard that that supposed news i thought maybe it was like fake or it was just some bullshit that my friend was spinning me but no the the trailers for this movie every single one of them was pretty much for the first like half an hour of the film you know it's it's either right before thanos snapped or five years in the future after Thanos snapped and that five years afterwards is after Thor comes in and just straight decapitates his ass before he cuts off the gauntlet and or I mean after he cuts off the gauntlet and the Avengers are all there on on Gamora's home planet I think is what it was when he's just chilling there and he uses stones again to just break all the stones and he, he broke them all yeah once they're once the stones have been used there's no purpose for them really so Thanos destroyed them so you know Thor comes in, so Thor is the one who gets the kill. Thor comes in, gets the kill. That's who I'm gonna count. That's who I'm gonna say killed Thanos. Um, Drax wasn't able to. He he was just he was dusted away. So Thor came in and he aimed for the head. And I you know I couldn't believe it. We saw that scene not once but twice. Okay, Thanos getting his head chopped off. I was like, dude, this this movie is slowly becoming more and more accepting of like the the R rated stuff. You know, and it actually kind of makes me believe that Marvel might be comfortable using some of Marvel's more, some of Marvel's edgier characters, such as, I don't know, like a certain fourth wall breaking guy in a red suit, uh, but not quite like Spider-Man, just a, like a different, like a different guy. You know, he's got two swords in the back. I forgot his name, but uh, it's making me seem like Marvel's getting more and more comfortable with this. They show a lot of blood, whether it be, you know, green blood, blue blood, human blood. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to all that blood in a minute. <laughs> um, you know what this movie was? You know, just like bottom line, I just want to say how I feel about the entire movie. Bottom line, this movie was. It's dude, this movie was fan service. This movie was fan service. It was. Um, it was a treat to those. If you enjoyed the Marvel Cinematic Universe starting at any point and you saw Infinity War and you were just like, yeah, okay, this is this is good. I like this. And you saw Endgame, this this Endgame is only good. Infinity War is also is also only good if you've seen the rest of the entire MCU. It only makes sense. Infinity War only in, at least makes sense if you if you've just seen the MCU. Um, but Endgame is like a treat if you've seen the entire MCU, but also Infinity War, obviously, right? What I mean by that, there's like a, there's just a bunch of, there's a bunch of Easter eggs. There are all these different callbacks and all these different like little fan moments that happen throughout the entire, the entire rest of the MCU. And I knew like, I was like, Marvel can't be setting up all these cool things. They can't be setting up all these little Easter eggs just for nothing, right? Like if they're going to call this the end game and this is really the, the first three phases of the MCU being called the Infinity Saga and all these things have just been all these Easter eggs scattered throughout leading up to this, up to this, you know, big badass villain named Thanos who could literally just snap away half the, half of all life, you know, all these fun little Easter egg things that Marvel has just gone crazy with in the comics over the years. Everything that they've done in the MCU, all these Easter eggs, they 
I have to go back and watch it a second time to, to really catch them all. But I thought that was the most that, that was the most satisfying part of the whole movie was just being around there and listening to all the different quotes and all the different moments in the MCU. Even the moments I don't remember really. They had um, a moment that, you know Thor had to go back to let's just say Thor the Dark World. They were going to different movies in the in the MCU period. Um, I forgot what their teams were. They had they had they had Stark, they had Cap, they had Scott, and they had Bruce, Hulk in the first Avengers. Uh, and then they had, I forgot, they had War Machine, and they had Nebula on in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, uh, Korag, something like that, I forgot. They had, damn, I forgot, it's, it's been so crazy, I don't, I don't even remember. I know they had, obviously they had Hawkeye and Black Widow on Vormir, obviously, and that, we'll get into all that in a minute. Um, what was I saying though? These Easter eggs, like the first Avengers movie, I thought like when I was watching that scene. First of all, I like how they had, as soon as they threw Ant Man in the mix, I don't know why, but the just the just the, the presence of Ant Man, automatically calls for a heist. And for for a while, this movie was, a time travel heist movie, and I I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was not ready for this movie to just be a time traveling heist movie, hunting down. Infinity Stones. I knew, look, all the fan theories on the internet had hinted that obviously they were going to go back in time and either stop Thanos from snapping and they were just really going to kick his ass or, you know, they were going to go back and try and get the stones before Thanos. I just didn't expect them to pull it off in the fashion that they pulled it off. Like, God damn it, they, they managed to make something like that so believable and so fun. For those who have been around, I've been around with the MCU since since Iron Man, since the very beginning, and the Godfather of it all made it made it happen. And just going back, starting from Iron Man, and just revisiting all these films that the Infinity Stones have really had a presence in. It's just so it was so cool to see, like when Tony, when that group, when Tony, Cap, Hulk, and Ant Man were were watching the previous the previous six Avengers, the original six ganging up on Loki and just seeing like the aftermath, all the stuff that we didn't get to see. You know, because remember when Hawkeye's like aiming his, uh, huh, aiming his bow at Loki? Like that scene, it just cuts right there. And it just cuts to like all the, I think it cuts to the news, all the news of the aftermath of the destruction from the Avengers. We don't really get to see like the right away aftermath of what happened. We don't even get to see why Loki got that metal thing put around his mouth. Thor told him to shut the fuck up and put it on his face. <laughs> like... That's just this is cool little things like that. They had a bunch of different moments like that where they just kind of answered some unanswered questions or just kind of just satisfied your curiosity a little bit, just a little bit. Like, okay, what would happen like in a in a right aftermath? I never would have guessed that Shield would have been just right there, ready to go on standby right after the events of the uh, right after the Battle of New York and the Avengers. I would never would have guessed that Shield was just there. They're just right there. And it was so cool to see, like, just the fact that they made the Hulk walk down the stairs and that actually led to the conflict. Like, he was just a dumb Hulk. He was a dumb Hulk and he, Tony had the Tesseract and everything. He had it and all of a sudden he was ready to go and then the Hulk just smashes through that shit. That, that's how you make conflict in time travel. That was just, these moments are just so cool just to take us back to those and, like, also make interesting stories out of them. It's just, that was just such a cool thing. I, I can't get over that. All these different Easter eggs, all the different lines that they said throughout the, all, you know, Cap in the elevator. I thought for sure he was going to have another elevator fight. I was like, no fucking way. They're going to have another Cap elevator fight. And they hit me with the biggest twist of them all. That was so goddamn smart. And I'm, you know, honestly, all things considered, I'm surprised Cap did this. Because at the end of the day, you know, Cap, I think, I think Cap knew there was no morality with what he was doing it was all or nothing the universe was at stake so he said fuck it hail hydra <laughs> to all those dudes i'm recording a video thanos really he's the main villain of the movie he's the main villain of the movie okay but it's not his movie anymore this is most definitely the avengers avengers movie and honestly that you know in order for this story to work 
you know, you had to include the Avengers, and obviously their stories were included in Infinity War, but really that was Thanos' movie. Like, we saw him win, and we saw the effects of what Thanos winning does for the Avengers. And now, Endgame is the rest of that, what, what it does for the Avengers. We saw they were just devastated. They were just like, holy shit, we lost. This is, this, we lost this time. You know, even in Age of Ultron, they, they came pretty damn close to losing but now in comparison, like, it's not just the Earth that's at stake. It's the entire universe. And they, dude, they lost. Hardcore. And this movie is like, the beginning The beginning is just them picking up the pieces. Then it becomes a time heist movie. And then it just becomes a struggle. Like, people died midway through this movie, okay? I'm going to start talking about that. It was, who, who can I think of that's actually dead? So we're going to kind of jump to the just the straight 100% no fucks given spoilers. So Black Widow's dead. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind that they killed Black Widow. I don't mind it. But so much for the black, the standalone film or however they're going to do that. I mean, they, they introduced time travel in this movie. I'll get into that in a minute. So they killed Black Widow. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm, I can survive. I can live with them killing Black Widow. Um, obviously, dude, the guy who started it all. What a fitting ending for his character. Iron Man, Tony Stark, that... I knew he was going to wield it. I knew he was going to wield the gauntlet of his own. I knew he was going to wield the Infinity Stones. And the fact that... Dude, if that cooked Thanos' arm after two tries, and it cooked the Hulk's arm after one try, you know, of course he's going to die. What do you... What did I expect? I was just thinking, there's just, there's just like... It just sucks, man. It's so fitting. And his last words were, I am Iron Man. That was like the twist. You know, normally it's like a big deal when, when superheroes reveal their identities. But he, that same line was the line that he revealed himself at the very end of Iron Man. And it was just such a cool thing to, it was a cool little twist to have him use. Or not, the, not a twist, but like the, like, that was the ultimate line. The fact that, you know, he is Iron Man and he's the one who did it. And he like, you know, all that shit talking in the first Avengers, him versus Cap, you know, you wouldn't be the one to lay down your life, you know, and Doctor Strange's plan. The only, the one way, dude, if Doctor Strange would have told him, he might have like, dude, he said it, he said it, he said, if you, if you, if I tell you, it's probably not going to happen. It won't happen. No, he said it won't happen. If I tell you, it won't happen. There's one way out of this. You die. You have to do it. Like you, you, he gets the gauntlet. I bet you he saw everything right up until that moment when Thanos like finally gets the gauntlet and he's got like Tony Stark down or he's got everyone down and he's finally about to use it. And then Tony, <laughs> Tony Stark comes in and just like, he literally just, just scooped those the stones right out of it. And what do you think Thanos have like noticed that? What did you think? I mean, when he gets the stones on him, wouldn't you think he would have noticed that the stone, like the power of the stones was just sucked out of him like right then and there before he tried snapping. It was just like a dink, like a clink. But uh, that's nitpicking at that point. It was just what a fitting end for Tony Stark and he used it. And so does that mean that I'd have to watch it again, but I'm pretty sure they explained it. They explained that all of Thanos' army, they weren't just snapped out of existence. They were snapped snapped back into time the time that they're that they came from i don't know if that means they have any memory of it um so maybe that's how thanos knows tony stark because maybe that maybe there's like a time loop or something that allows him to keep getting his ass kicked by <laughs> by tony stark and that's how he keeps remembering and that's how he knows tony stark but wouldn't he know the avengers too wouldn't he know all the avengers at that point too so maybe not um who else is confirmed dead? I don't. We can't really say Vision is confirmed dead. He wasn't in this movie at all, though. I thought about him like a decent amount. I was like, we're so no Vision, like no Vision. Speaking of which, Scarlet Witch, dude, Scarlet Witch almost took on Thanos one on one. Like she, dude, she totally could have. Scarlet Witch is a badass, dude. Dark Phoenix is coming out later this year or sometime soon. I, I don't even know when that's coming out, but I know there's gonna be like. 
the comparison. Remember when Age of Ultron came out, and that was also when Days of Future Past came out, and the two Quicksilvers were being compared? Well, let me tell you something. I think Scarlet Witch's just mass power, her her massive abilities, whatever you want to call it, um, I think are going to trump the Phoenixes, the Dark Phoenix. I think it's just going to be more... It's not... Like, realistic isn't the word I'm looking for. I think it's just going to be more believable that dude she almost took thanos down dude she's badass like she came in infinity war it came in clutch i think she's one of the most underused avengers i think she she seriously is and she's only had time to shine in, in the three well uh, well okay let's say like four avengers films now because civil war was basically an avengers film uh but yeah she's only been in avengers movies she's been in age of ultron civil war so that's a cat movie i guess but like i said it's basically avengers two and a half and then infinity war and endgame and she was obviously snapped away, but um, she was badass, dude. She's 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 hardcore. What else to talk about, man? I could talk about a bunch of shit. There's just a bunch of cool shit. I, I'll say this. Um, or hold on, who else is dead? Thanos is dead. Thanos got his head chopped off. So if what I said is true, and they all just go back to the timeline, that means Thanos has got his head chopped off. He's super dead. So that means he won't be a fucking problem anymore. Let me let me ask you this. Speaking of dead characters, uh, and Tony Stark specifically here, why they couldn't bring Black Widow back makes sense to me. She was she was the Soul Stone. She was like the sacrifice for the Soul Stone. There's no undoing that. I don't think even using the Time Stone would have would have affected the undoing of the Soul Stone because I think that means the Soul Stone wouldn't be there, um, which really sucks because that's like the ultimate plot. Like, that's just the brick wall of a plot. That's, like, the ultimate way to kill. They chose. They were like, okay, look, we're just going to make this impossible task of getting the Soul Stone. Somebody has to die, and that's it. It's permanent. And I think they just, they had that plot, that that plot thing in mind, the device. And they were like, okay, now we just got to pick a character to die. So who, who's going to be the one to sacrifice it? <laughs> chose Black Widow. So she, her not coming back makes sense. But... And I don't think you can use the quantum realm time travel to do that. But here's the thing. For Tony Stark, couldn't they have used a time stone to like to bring him back? Not the quantum realm. Because the quantum realm literally puts... He, Tony Stark said it. Puts people through time. That's, that's the time travel that he made with using the quantum realm. It puts people through time. The time stone, from my understanding, from what we saw it in Infinity War, when, when Thanos finally got the time stone, he was all like this, and he got, he just, I don't know if he just rewinded Vision being destroyed, or if he literally, like, rewinded all of time, but Scarlet Witch was unaffected while he was doing that. So I would, just, I would assume that Thanos only rewinded the destruction of the Mind Stone using the time stone just to get it out of vision's head. So with that being said, couldn't they have used the time stone to bring him back? Like he's just sitting there, he's just bleeding out. And I guess time it's a it's like relative of oops, I'm getting an alarm. Oh, it's an alarm clock. Whoops. There you go. Yeah, couldn't they have used the time stone to bring Tony Stark back? Doesn't that make sense? He's just sitting there. He's just like, his right arm is just fucked up. He thought his left arm was all messed up, all that, that Easter egg stuff. I'm kind of mad they didn't pay homage to that, like his left arm being all busted and they gave him the right-handed gauntlet instead. That's okay. But now in comparison, like his right side is jacked up. And obviously he paid the price for it. But couldn't they have brought him back? Like just using the time stone and manipulated the... It's like, how do I explain it? It's just Tony Stark's time. Just Tony Stark's time. Kind of like how Thanos reversed just Vision's time or something like that. Does that like make sense? Couldn't they have brought Tony back that way? Who could have used it? But I mean, Doctor Strange could have used it. He fucks with the Time Stone by itself. Couldn't Doctor Strange... I guess, I don't know. I guess maybe Doctor Strange saw that happening. Maybe he went past. Maybe he went past everything and just like, okay, just to be sure. Like, there's no way Thanos just comes back, right? Maybe there was a way where Thanos comes back if, if they rewinded Tony Stark. Maybe Tony Stark would have created another Ultron or something and, and just had Ultron figure a way out <laughs> to bring Thanos back or something. Who fucking knows, dude? Or maybe that's what happened. Maybe Ultron came back. Who knows? All this is just crazy fan theory, but um, who else died? So it was mostly just Iron, it was mostly Iron Man, 
Black Widow and Thanos. Those are the two only deaths that stuck in the MCU. And I, I, you know, I think the only one that I don't think that fits is Black Widow. I don't think Black Widow, I don't think her death is, is fitting. It would have been almost more fitting to see Tony and Cap go for the Soul Stone and have one of them like sacrifice their lives. It almost would have seemed fitting that way. But then they couldn't have had that finale in the end. You know, they couldn't have just had that whole thing. I don't know. But speaking of that finale in the end, I think that's going to be the last thing I talk about before I kind of close this up. Because I've been going for a half an hour and this is just <laughs> nonstop. Dude, I said this at the beginning. Or I didn't say it at the beginning, but somewhere near the start, I said that this movie was fan service. That final battle was just that was the best superhero fight i've ever seen <laughs> that was the best especially the, the best like grand scale superhero fight i've ever seen when i saw ant-man just go big but like really fucking big he was goliath dude that was some goliath shit it wasn't giant man that was goliath right there and I know Goliath is, is uh, that's, uh, that's, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Oh, no. The guy who played uh, in, in Ant-Man and the Wasp. What the hell is his name? Oh, my God. I can't think of his name. The actor. The black dude. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm blanking right now. I don't, yeah, anyway. That's Goliath for real. But, dude, he, man, and he punched it. Did you see the way he literally just... He punched that big ass worm out of the sky like the Hulk did that and he was like, you know, the Hulk is like this and Ant-Man was literally just like this, dude. And he just fucking... <laughs> I saw that. That made me go like, that's how I knew this ending fight was going to be crazy, dude. Ant-Man, Ant-Man was like, I think, I think Ant-Man was one of my favorite characters in the whole movie. Seeing him and he literally like came back and, and or he, I'm sorry, he turned big and he saved Rocket and War Machine. I don't know about the Hulk, but... Seeing him go big like that. And finally, Cap had his moment where he said, Avengers Assemble. This this movie is fan service, dude. That last fight scene was nothing but fan service. And it was done right. Like, it was, it was fan service done right. If I... Look, I think the Russo brothers knew the, the people who would enjoy this the most are the people who have been with the MCU since the beginning. Uh, I've been... Me, dude, I've been with Marvel since my, my entire life. I've loved superheroes i used to swing around the house pretending i was spider-man um i love superheroes never really read into the comics i've read some different comics like the watchman you know like the punisher is his own separate thing of comics you know i read a few things here and there but you know i'm just i've always loved superheroes and never in my life did i imagine i was ever going to get like such an epic i never thought like a marvel comic a grand epic marvel comic a grand comic book like superhero story on the big screen that was going to work out. That last fight scene in Endgame, that was the most comic book. That was pulled straight from a fucking comic book, dude. That was incredible. There was a lot of stuff happening, so I'd have to go back and see it again. I most certainly am going to go back to see this movie, dude. Oh my god, I can't get over it. This thing, Avengers Endgame ruined my life. And Tony Stark's dead. I'm going to start crying right now, dude. <laughs> That, that movie was just so epic. I forgot to... This movie is so epic. I forgot to drink my coffee. Let me see how warm it is. It's cold, dude. It's cold. It's been a half an hour. It's been literally 29 minutes, 35 seconds. It's cold. Oh, my God, man. <clears throat> that last fight scene was epic. It was epic. I am Iron Man. It was just such a pause. Cap got the assemble. I thought Cap was going to bite it, dude. When I saw that, when I saw Cap's shield, dude, Thanos was like going fucking, fucking, just beating the fuck out of Cap's fucking shield. I was like, dude, Cap's done. Cap's done. And Thanos is going to stand over him. He's just going to like stick it in him or something. I thought Cap was done there. And he strapped that up, that one scene from that one trailer, just like, bam, strapped up the shield. And he, dude, he had no idea backup was coming. I thought that was the most, that was the most just epic moment from Captain America in the entire MCU. That was such a fucking epic moment. Honestly, I think that even trumps a little bit when he when he took Thor's hammer. When I saw that, I was like, yes. That is exactly what I'm waiting for. Things like that. Those things 
what we've been waiting for. We've seen Cap in the first Avengers be a total badass against aliens, and we saw Winter Soldier, and then Cap just nudging that hammer, and then Thor said, I knew it. Like, things like that, dude. Things like that are what make this movie this movie. Things like that are what make this movie, it's fan service, dude. There's no other way to spell it. It's fan service done right. You can have an awesome, awesome fucking movie and an awesome story, consequences, emotions, just action, fun, humor, all that stuff. Fan service it all, just, just fan service it up. You can have all that and have it still be good. I'm looking right at you, DC. I'm not just straight shit talking to you, DC, but I mean, DC was hard. It is hardcore trying to provide fan service for stuff from their comics. And, you know, none of that means shit unless you have like a great, a great story. And this story took years to build, dude. I mean, from Iron Man, they never expected without a successful Iron Man movie, this, none of this would have been possible. And that's what I mean. Like, they took it back to where the, to what they knew best, which was their roots, which was their humble beginnings, which was Iron Man. And so they, they took it back. They said, dude, fuck it. We're going to, this is it. Like, this is it. This is it. 22 movies. I, we've never had a 22 movie story before. We've never had a, a, like one, one goal, one story with one goal over 22 movies before. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, we have to thank for that. We can now go back and watch 22 movies and all these shows that are also part of these movies technically. Um, but just don't have anything to do with the Infinity Stones really, but still. This movie was great. The movie was great. Now, is it better than Infinity War? Oh, that's a tough one, dude. I have to I'll have to do that one. I'll have to make a video on that. But I have to see Endgame first. I'd have to watch both of them. Uh, back to back to see which one's better because the story is just so damn good like this movie was great this movie was fantastic um just go ahead and do yourself the favor there's no end credit scene there's no end credit scenes but do you, you know what watch the watch the um watch the credits the, the first part of the credits before the scrolling text you know for all the scrolling stuff watch the credits it's so it's what an homage dude what an homage to these to these wonderful characters that we've all grown to love you know, over the over the past 10 years, dude. And it's just, it's such an incredible thing. And I'd like to thank all the actors. Obviously, all the actors. I'd like to thank all of them. They were fantastic. They were all great. Um, I want to thank Robert Downey Jr. And his, I'm sure it was, um, how much, what's the word? Like, what's the word I'm trying to think of this? It was as much of a gamble for, for, the people making Iron Man, you know, Marvel, it was as much as gamble for, for Marvel as it was for Robert Downey Jr. As it kind of, uh, as it kind of sort of was for the fans who are going into Iron Man. Iron Man's like a B-list character, kind of. He's one of the founding Avengers, but, you know, his comics are kind of like just pushed to the side. And it's very different from the comics. Props to Robert Downey Jr. You earned it, man. You, that, you, this, you earned what you got. You took a leap of faith. Marvel took a leap of faith. Everybody who saw Iron Man and loved it took a leap of faith and got on board with you. And you and John Favreau and everybody involved with that are the reason why we got this epic, just epic story concluded that started with you, Mr. Robert Downey Jr. Uh, I want to thank you. Seriously, I think I think most of the fans can, can agree to that. Um, movie was crazy. I can go on and on and on and on and on. So many badass moments. I just love this movie's fan service. When it, when you boil it down, it's a it's an epic fan service story. And there's just all these fun little Easter eggs that are for the fans. And you can also have a badass story involved. You can have a great, well told story with with characters that you give a fuck about. You know, all these different things factor into it. I want also I also want to thank the Russo brothers, tasked with the impossible. And also the first directors to to be to, the first directors to make three one billion dollar movies: Civil War, Infinity War, blah, Avengers Endgame, Morty, Avengers Endgame, Morty. It's it, there's the first directors to make three Avenger, uh, one billion dollar movies, Morty. I didn't even take a sip there, almost. <laughs> Good job, Russo brothers. Thank you. Thank you.
Russo brothers. Seriously, this is this is incredible. I can't believe it. I never thought I was gonna ever see something like this in my life. I, I honestly can't believe it. But yeah, I can go on and on and on. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that rant. That was just a lengthy ass rant. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's all I have to say. That's not all I have to say, but that's all I have to say for now. There's a bunch of stuff I can go into, but I'm going to moderate it. Out of 10? 10, 10, dude. 10. Why wouldn't I, why would I give it anything less than a 10? Because there's moments, there's plot holes and stuff. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect film, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about what I walked away from the theater feeling and the emotion is the most important thing. And I can't, I can't help but say, I love this movie, dude. This movie I still don't know if it's better than Infinity War, but I'll have to I'll have to compare it. If anything, I might just have to compare it to as as like one big movie because I really like this movie, dude. This movie was fucking phenomenal. I, yeah, I could talk about it all day, but I'm not going to. So I'm gonna cut it right there, you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I haven't been posting. Um, I'm gonna be posting more videos about just the stuff I've been going through. Just my life has just been so fucking crazy. Just a bunch of shit going on. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, it's fitting that I'm back with Avengers Endgame. Totally fits who I am. Hope you like the shirt and all that stuff. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Fucking crazy movie, dude. Crazy shit. All right, let's cut this fucker.